Hello again, everyone. This is Chris Sharon. That's Robert Harding. And this is the Citizen Sports Weekly for Friday, February 20th, 2015. And it's a very chilly, frigid Friday here in Auburn, New York. Where are we? Single, single digits it, and wind chills in the 20 below range. It's unbelievably cold, and that's why we want to talk about baseball. That's right. Although it's really cold in Florida. Probably. It's no, cold it is. Everywhere. It is. It is cold in Florida. Uh, I saw someone say it was in the teens around the D.C. area. Today. Our, our wonderful National Weather Service, which is uh, located out of the Binghamton area, they put out a map this morning on Twitter, and the line of freezing temperatures extends all the way into central Florida, uh, as far south as Orlando. So if you're in Disney World, too bad, man. You picked a bad week to go. Frostbite on Mickey's ears. Oh, my God, man. I'm telling you, it's... It's not pleasant. So, so we're going to talk about a little baseball and a couple other little topics. I'd like to touch upon the Miracle on Ice on the 35th anniversary this weekend, just a little bit, just a little bit. So, nice. so baseball, and I, I guess the big story coming out so far is, of course, A. Rod and the Yankees. Because if it isn't a soap opera in spring training, then it's not the Yankee spring training. I mean, last year we had, of course, Derek Jeter saying. Uh, my last year, the year before, we had Mariano Rivera, you know, and we had A Rod stuff. I mean, it seems like we have A Rod every year. I it's mean, an off and on scan. It is. It's just, I mean, I used to be a Yankee fan. I think I stopped being a Yankee fan when they traded for A Rod. I think that the way the teams of the late 90s, the mid to late 90s, won those World Series, which was a very team centered approach, non superstar approach. And when they got away from that and they got A-Rod, I think I basically like, eh, I can't really root for this team anymore. Tough, but, but you know, I guess the main questions are is what type of player are we going to get? Because obviously A-Rod wasn't lighting it up in his last games before he uh, was suspended. And uh, how is he going to be greeted? Um, you know, how is he going to be greeted by his teammates? Uh, what's going to happen this year with the Yankees? Because, you know, if you're a Yankees fan, you can't be feeling too great about this season that you're, you feel like your team's going to be a contender here. So, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. Robert, what's your take on this? How about that apology? He wrote out in person? <laughs> I can give him credit for that, man. How many people write anymore? That, that would have, you know. That's supposed to show sincerity. I guess. People, I think, read too much into that. They said, oh, why is it written in cursive? Because he was trying to be sincere. And I give him props for that. He probably had a fourth grade handwriting right. class or something. No, to it's, 10 years overdue. it's 10 years overdue. This, this apology should have happened years ago. Like this, like written out. We're like, yeah, this time I'm not kidding. I'm really sorry. And I'm never going to do it again. Well, you know, I, I don't know. Part of, part of me is saying, you know, maybe he is, you know, truly, uh, maybe he was truly affected by this, that he, you know, realized what he had done and, uh, has decided to take this step. But a part of me says, you know, I mean, how long did you get away with this for? Yeah. That, uh, you know, certainly if you look back to, uh, you know, the different timelines that we have of his alleged PED use. And not alleged. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't say alleged. It's it's not alleged. Well, some we can't prove. Right. Yeah. Right. I know. But You're being polite. Yeah. But, you know, you look at the time periods, and he put up huge numbers. Yeah. So, you know... I, and he made a ton of money off of it. I mean, you know, to me, that's why the apology, at least in part, you know, it just falls on deaf ears because you have benefited right. greatly from this, whether it's on the stat sheet, in your pocketbook, whatever, mm -hmm. and, you know, then, then you apologize after right. you get slapped with a, with a ban. It's, it's the old, one of the oldest sayings in the book, you know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. And, and that's the thing, I mean... He's fooled us twice, so there's no more. It's all the shame's on him. I'm not. Look, I'm not buying it. I mean, he's not going to be the player that he ever was, even when he was, I don't know, not using steroids or using steroids. I mean, he's going to be what? He's 38, 39 years old, and uh, from what I'm hearing, he's going to be a backup first baseman. I mean, this is hilarious. I mean, in a weird way, he's going to be like in purgatory, which is a good place for him. I mean, he's going to play because the Yankees have to pay him because they they owe him all this money. I wouldn't be surprised, that, depending on how things go, and my prediction is that he's, he's basically going to hit around 250 if he's lucky, with maybe about 15 homers and about 60 or 70 ribbies if he plays a decent amount of at-bats. And I think the Yankees will be smart. They'll negotiate a buyout of that contract. Just say, here, 
here's twenty, thirty million dollars, just go away <laughs> because it's not doing us any good. And it's not doing you any good. I mean this guy should not be playing baseball anymore. So Yeah. Yeah. No disagreements there. Yeah. I just wish he would go away. Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. Meanwhile, the Mets <laughs> Crickets? No. No, you know, I feel, here's the thing about the Mets. Somebody I know, who, she's a sports writer, she covers the Mets for the Daily News down in New York City. Her name's Christy Ackert, and she's a baseball beat writer. And baseball beat writers, folks, if you don't know, they have look, probably the toughest job in all sports writing because it is literally a, I mean, it's a year-round job, which is like the NFL, but there's more travel involved, there's more games, obviously. It, it's just one crazy thing. And I, my heart always goes out to Christy because she's she's a very good writer, and she's a real trooper to the, they'll slog it out on that baseball beat. And she's been in Florida now for a couple of weeks already. And um, the oh. season's just going, I know, I, I know, but still. It is cold there. I mean, you know. But <laughs> I'm just saying it's not all fun and games. I mean, don't get me wrong. There are some nice things about covering baseball. And she's not complaining about it, believe me. I know her. But it's a tough job. And I'm just pointing that out. But the Mets... You know, you want to think you're going to see some improvement from this team. Harvey's back. Um, some of the younger players are going to be getting more time, might be performing. You want to think the Mets, and they're playing, I think, in one of the toughest divisions in baseball. Not the toughest, but one of the toughest. you got the yeah. Mar- you got the Marlins much improved. The Nats are, are, are talking World Series already. The Braves are going to be interesting because they've done a lot of different things, a lot of changes. They've traded parts. Yeah, and, and they, they could be improved. Really, the only team it's you know it's going to be not good is the Phillies. Wow. I hate to say that. I like Jeremy Boyer. I know. Our boss, Jeremy Boyer, is, is a <laughs> Philly fanatic, and I feel bad for him. But, I, well, they did win the World Series in 08, so you can't take that away from them. But, anyways, it, it, you know, the Mets, one of those teams you got to keep an eye on. I think they could be competitive. They could give their fans some hope for 2016, 2017. And, you know, as they used to say in Flushing Meadows, you got to believe. I guess. That was Tuck McGraw. Yeah. Former Auburn Met. There you go. So, all right. Uh, what else baseball you want to talk about, sir? I'm excited for the Nationals. You should be. I'm, you know, I, ho- I hope to make a few games this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, big fan. Have been since, you know, before I moved here. Mm-hmm. Uh, then when I moved here, it was like a year or two later. Yeah. I learned that the double days are going to be yeah. in the Nationals organization, which is cool. Um, you know, they, they have the pieces on paper. You mm-hmm. know, we always talk about... How these teams look on paper before the season. We do it with the NFL every yeah. year. But, uh, you know, the pitching staff. Wow. That's crazy. Great, great pitching staff. Uh, the bats are there. Yeah. Uh, they certainly have a good uh, order, you know, up and down, one through, well, eight uh, in the NL's case. So uh, I'm excited. I think they can, you know, hopefully they can get over the hump this year. They should be the favorite. And you figure the Giants won the World Series last year, so they're not going to win it this year. <laughs> this, you know, it's the every other year thing. <laughs> And then the other team that's an odd number well, year. And then, of course, you have the Cardinals, who seem to always, every other year, get good. Then, of course, the Cubs are much improved. You got the Dodgers. The Dodgers. The Padres have made some moves. You know, yeah. they, they, you know. So the NL West is going to be tough. The too. National League, yeah. I mean, I think top to bottom, the, the NL West is the best division in baseball, except for the Diamondbacks. Padres, uh, Giants, Dodgers. I mean, just uh, really tough. You know, Giants, just very tough division, so. Well, I, don't, I think we're doing a little too much baseball now. I think that here it is. It's second week of February, third week of February, and, man, we're already... You want to talk NASCAR? We're talking... No, we're not talking NASCAR. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> folks. NASCAR free zone. I know Daytona 500s this weekend. Biggest weekend in all of NASCAR, all the racing. But, no, I'm not going there. But one thing I do want to talk about, if Robert doesn't mind, is this, is, this Sunday will be the 35th anniversary of the Miracle on Ice. Ooh, hockey. Wow. It's also my wife's birthday, which is more important than the Miracle on Ice, at least to me. But, yeah. you know. But anyways, 35, I should say anyways. I'm sorry, honey. You know I love you. It's going to be, <laughs> you're going to have a great birthday. I promise you that. I promise. Okay. Just don't take it seriously. It's just all for fun. Uh, anyway, so the 35th anniversary of the Miracle on Ice, which I was 12 years old. Well, I was going to be 13 later on that year. But for extent purposes, I was still 12. And as long as I live, I will never forget the excitement, the patriotism, just the sheer fun of, of watching these games and, and watching them uh, beat the Russians. Of course, the game was not live on TV. It was a 5 o'clock game. It didn't air till 8 o'clock on ABC. But then the, the gold medal game, which some people forget, is that they didn't win the gold by beating the Russians. Right? I know you knew that because you're a student of sports history. But they had to beat the Finns on, um, 
on Sunday. It was an 11 a.m. start on ABC. Al Michaels, Ken Dryden doing the call. And I just never forget, and for me this is my best memory, is when the game was over, my dad and I jumping up, jumping up and down and hugging. We were so excited. My dad really, not a huge uh, guy, guy who liked watching sports on TV. He really didn't care about watching games on TV, but he watched the end of that game with me. And I just remember celebrating with him. It was just a very special moment. Never forget it. And uh, it was just an amazing time. And if you uh, have the chance, there's a movie called Miracle that Disney put out about 10 years ago. Uh, if you can get a hold of that, watch that. Um, HBO did a great documentary called Do You Believe in Miracles? And it's got interviews with everybody from Michael Ruzioni, Jim Craig, Al Michaels. Just uh, amazing stuff. And if you get the chance, just uh, maybe on Sunday, just take a moment and remember the Miracle on Ice because uh, that's one of those moments that it'll never happen again. The, the circumstances, can, this will never happen again. Unless we're playing ISIS in hockey or something, or Al Qaeda in hockey, or some other sport, I'm sorry, in the Olympics, it's not going to happen again. Okay, that's a little bit of a joke. No joke with ISIS, though. Those guys are bad people. But, anyways, Robert, anything that you want to say about the Miracle on Ice, even though you weren't even born, not even a glimmer in your. Let's see. Not, nothing back, you know? Yeah, I. Crickets. I, <laughs> I don't think half my sisters were born at that yeah. point. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I, I, of course, wasn't around for that. Uh, I, Chris and I were talking about this the other day, and I mentioned, you know, I've gone back and probably watched uh, that clip uh, of either the last five minutes mm -hmm. of the game or the whole game. Uh, I can't count how many times, dozens. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, it, it's just a great moment in sports, uh, and it blends with, you know, my other interests, which, of course, is politics. Uh, you know, the political situation mm -hmm. at the time, uh, just that time in our history and to have this moment in sports uh, was tremendous. And, you know, looking at it from a sports angle, the Soviets dominated for years. Yeah, they had I won mean, every gold since 1964. They, you know, they were an Olympic dynasty. And, you know, they had the, some of the greatest players in the world. And for that USA team, uh, which was made up of basically a bunch of college kids, to go up against uh, these pros, basically, and win, uh, phenomenal. And, uh, you know, they they left their mark on history, and it's something that, you know, you look at these guys and you look at, you know, not <laughs> not very many of them had great NH NHL careers, but uh, they always have this. A few, a few did. A yeah, few but did. not most of them. Not most yeah. of them, but a few did. Kenny Morrow went right from that team to the Islanders, won the Stanley Cup that right. year. And then won the next three after that. The guy won wins an Olympic gold medal, then four straight Stanley Cups. Got used to winning. That's real pretty quick. darn good, man. That's you know, not bad, man. Uh, there's been some very. Uh, Neil Broughton had a good Neil NHL Broughton, career. Yeah. I mean, there were some, you know, some good NHL careers on that team. So, yeah. of course, unfortunately, Jim Craig didn't have a good NHL career. But you know, no. that's another story. But but yeah, but they'll they'll always have this, and you know, for for a lot of people, you know, hockey's not you know America's number one yeah. sport. It's not even that's number three sport yeah. really, and. Uh, you know, for a lot of people, when they, you know, when they think of moments like this, they think of this. They don't yeah. think of, oh, well, you know, he didn't have a 10-year NHL career. They think, yeah, but he played in the Miracle on Ice yeah. game. And, you know, it's a, it's a historic moment. It's a great moment in sports. And uh, I know whenever I can, you know, whether it's the movie Miracle or, you know, some of the documentaries yeah. are out there, uh, you know, I try to soak it all in because it, it certainly was great and uh uh, fascinating to learn more about yeah. and and really dig into. So yeah, it's it's going to be cool that they'll be marking that right uh, right yeah, here in the New team, York State. The team will be yeah. up. Uh, all the members except for one who passed away of a heart attack last year. And of course, Coach Herb Brooks, who died of a died in a car crash back in '03 or '04. Uh, they're all going to be in Lake Placid this weekend uh, on Saturday and Sunday, and uh, it's going to be an amazing time. I wish I could make it up there and uh, see those guys because I like I said, it's just uh, if you live through it, if you live through it, you will never forget it. Is an amazing time in our country's history, and and that's what I mean. Our country's history. I'm talking about, you know, when you talk about Watergate and Vietnam and the energy crisis and the hostage crisis in Iran, and you know what happened in Lake Placid in 1980 it ranks right up there as a part of American history, not just sports. So, Robert, anything else you want to discuss? I'm done. We're gonna wrap it up here, folks. Again, honey, have a happy birthday. You know, can't say. What that are you enough. getting there, Chris? Tell the tell the good people. Out oh, there. I have something in mind. She she knows what she's getting for her birthday. It's special. It's a gift card to Panda Express, probably. Actually, no, Costco. But, <laughs> but anyways, folks, until next week, 
We appreciate you watching, and please uh, share the links. We'll see you next week.